Alright, hey everyone, Riley here from becominganelectrician.com. In this video, I want to quickly talk to you about what a power source is when we are doing our electrical uh, circuits. Alright, so I'm just drawing an electrical load right there. But we want to focus on the power source in this video, okay? So typically, uh, we as commercial and residential electricians, you're going to see it like this. This means like an AC source. But uh, many times when you're first starting up with these circuits, so again, this is an AC circuit. Many times when you're working with a DC circuit, uh, they're just going to do like a battery and it just kind of looks like this. All right. And they might go like uh, 12 volts or something when the AC would be like 120 volts for our um, power source. Typically, this is like a positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So depending on, I guess, like how big the battery is, it's just kind of like a little representation of that. So a power source is what provides the circuit actually power all right so you know now we have power in here and then this is what's called an, a, a load okay so um, a load is something that is consuming power a power source is providing the circuit power now as an electrician so this right here would be like um our electrical panel okay now this could be a generator like if you're writing your test but generally in like the real world if we're looking at a circuit it comes from the panel which comes from the transformer which is generated however it's generated, right? Whether it's through hydropower, uh, you know, wind turbines, however this panel gets powered, then this is like the source. And typically in a home, we have 120 volts. But when you are in a commercial setting, there can be different panels, right? It could be like panel A, it could be panel B. Uh, so for example, let's just go panel B. Now, when you are in a commercial setting, many times panel A might be 120 volts. OK, but then some panels might be special panels which are only powering certain things. So, for example, this panel B could be something like 480 volts and it's only powering certain equipment. Like, for example, if you have to work at a winery or something like that where they have really special equipment, because here in North America, 480 volts isn't that common. But in order to get that voltage, we just use transformers. OK, we're not really so much concerned about how the power is generated. We are just mainly focused on what is the voltage for this power source, because when when we connect what's called our electrical load. OK, now, when something is an electrical load, it's important to know uh, two things about it. Is it a resistive load or is it an inductive load? So, for example, if it's R1, then we can actually apply what's called Ohm's law, like directly right across it. So, for example, we have V, I and R, right? So we can apply Ohm's law just directly to that. And something that is purely resistive is something like a baseboard heater. OK, you're going to see BBH out there. And so what this is doing is it's literally you know, like a resistor that that's kind of like how they would draw it. And what you're doing is uh, typically you're sending two phases to it because it allows the wire size to be smaller. So if we are using higher voltage, we can have lower amps. OK. And so, you know, on this side, we might give a phase and then B phase. Right. And then uh, our baseboard heater wire could be smaller. Uh, but sometimes we can just uh, have like an A phase and then like the neutral, which would be like 120, 120 volts, right? Uh, but if you are in a home setting where, again, this is just one phase, but if you had uh, two, 240 volts, then this would be like B phase. So this would be like, let's just do like, um, so this would be like red and then this could be like uh, black, for example. Uh, <laughs> I guess I can't do black on that. I'll, I have a gray. Uh, we'll do that. So it could be like um, red and black, and then this could be to 40 volts. OK, so um, again, so let's just go back to uh, the different types of loads that are fully resistive, because this is going to be another video I'll create about uh, electrical loads. So a power source is what is providing this circuit with power and then an electrical load, something like a baseboard heater or a toaster. OK, so, you know, when you push down uh, for, for your toast in the morning, uh, it is literally just heating up a resistor like that and it's getting your toast all nice and hot and then same with the baseboard heater you're you're getting your room all nice and warm but again it's just a resistor and when we talk about uh, a resistive load and an inductive load okay so we have resistive and we have inductive and this is going to be the other video but it is important to understand both okay so um a load is what is consuming power. The power source is being sent to us, right? This is typically by the utility company. They have generated the power again, however they've generated it. 
All we need to know as electricians is the voltage, okay? And then when it comes to running our wire, we need to figure out, is it single phase? Is it three phase? And all of that is what's called um, on our equipment schedule, as well as, you know, it's pretty much in our prints, okay? And we have a couple different prints that we look at. Again, you guys can check out the website and I have tons of articles about prints uh, that you need to look at. But when we talk about a resistive load, um, that means that voltage and current are in phase, okay? And when we talk about inductive, it is saying that current is lagging voltage. And I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but what I want to say is when we have a purely, so 100% purely resistive load, okay, this, if this load right here is 100% purely resistive, and what does that mean? That is something that's like a heating element, a baseboard heater, a toaster, something like that. Then we can apply Ohm's law, okay? So for example, if we want to find a uh, voltage here, so for example, I always tell you, make your T's, right? So we know that we have 120 volts, right? Let's just keep it simple. Let's just say that we have um, 10 ohms here, right, for R1. So we put 10 ohms right there, and then we know that we would have 12 amps, all right? And this is Ohm's law when something is 100% purely resistive and the resistance of it is constant, okay? But when something is inductive, um, that is where things get a little bit more tricky and we have to use what's called Pythagoras theorem. And uh, that will be in upcoming videos. And the whole goal here is trying to find out the length of the hypotenuse as well as the power factor to figure out how uh, essentially how efficient um, that piece of equipment is. So an inductive is essentially something with moving parts, something like a motor and stuff like that. Okay, so without getting too off track with loads, um, so that I just wanted to talk to you about a power source. So when we are electricians out there in the real in the real world with um, residential and commercial, right, in homes or in a commercial facility where you can potentially be having different panels, the main thing that we're looking at is the voltage. Okay, and then when it comes to the, to the actual piece of equipment, you know, we're looking at how many phases does it need, uh, the wire size, and all that stuff can be um, told to us through like what's called the nameplate of the equipment, as well as equipment schedules and other things regarding this piece of equipment that are all on your prints. Many times they even tell you like the wire size, the voltage, if it's motors, it tells you like the horsepower, all that stuff. Okay, um, so the power source is what is giving this circuit power. The electrical load is what is consuming power. When you are doing this intense kind of math stuff, if it's purely resistive, you can use Ohm's law, this triangle, like right, you know, right off the board, don't worry about anything else. If it's inductive, then you start having to use what's called Pythagoras theorem. But one final thing I will say is uh, when it comes to these loads, all of this is really calculated for us when we are electricians, okay? So as an electrician, we just look at the prints, we follow the prints. The engineers are doing all this intense work for us. In school, we have to learn all this stuff, and it's pretty intense because really when you're out there, you really don't use it too much, but you have to learn it in school, and this is just a breakdown of how it works. Um, so that is what's called a power source. The, the actual utility company gives us the power. And that is what is powering our electrical devices. In order for us to connect our devices, it's very important that we are looking at what does this device require in terms of, again, voltage, phase, wire size. Okay, so that is a power source.